Closing entries are typically done at the end of an accounting cycle and their main purpose is to uh, reset accounts that are temporary to a balance of zero. And what I mean by temporary accounts is um, we all have those uh, certain things that we budget during the year. So for example, um, I might go ahead and keep track of the amount of income that I have for all of 2017. So I'll keep adding and adding and adding and eventually at the end of 2017 I'll have a number in that account and I'll say I have this much in income. However, um, at the end of 2017 I obviously want to prepare for 2018 so is that balance going to continue and roll over to 2018? No, in 2018 I want to start fresh. I want to start with zero so I can see how much I earn in 2018. So that's the same kind of thing that we are going to do here. We are going to find out those accounts that we have to um, kind of uh, close out to a balance of zero. So let's take a look at these account types and talk about whether or not we would want to start a new period with a balance of zero. So remember your assets are things that you own, those future economic benefits. So um, think about cash. If I go to sleep on December 31st with $10,000 in my checking account, um, does that balance go away at the beginning of the next day on January 1st? No. So that one has an ongoing balance. So this is what we would call a permanent type of account. Um, liabilities are the same. Does the amount I owe disappear just because it's a new accounting period? No. My liabilities are going to stay there no matter what. Um, capital. Now capital is a bit of an interesting case. Um, our main capital account, for example, Christopher Knowles Capital, that one is a permanent account. The interest in the company, it's not going to be closed out to a balance of zero. However, you're drawing that is uh, one that would be considered temporary. So if we had a balance in this drawing account, we would want to set that to a balance of zero. And even though we do not have a balance of zero in this account, I am going to show um, in this example what we would do if we did have one. So let's move on to this next one. And actually, let's even go ahead and put some P's next to these assets for permanent and a P next to these liabilities since those are all permanent and a P next to that capital since that one's permanent and then drawing would be temporary. Okay, next income and revenue. So income and revenues, would I want to close that out to a balance of zero for the next period? Yeah, I want to start fresh during the next period. I want to see what my income is from one period of time to the next. And the same with expenses as well. Expenses, I want to see how much I earn during a specific period. And once I start a new period, I want to start out with zero. So all of our revenues, which we only have one in this case, and all of our expenses, those are all going to be temporary. Okay, next, let's go ahead and talk about uh, closing entries in general. Um, there are four closing entries that we typically see. One, two, three, four. Now, um, each one has a specific purpose. And I'm going to write those, that pur those purposes up right now. However, keep in mind it might be a little vague, but it will make sense a little bit later. So your first closing entry closes revenues to income summary. And your income summary, this is just kind of a temporary intermediate account that we use just for the closing process. Um, your second closing entry closes expenses to income summary. Well, your third closing entry will close income summary. So there we go. We created it and we're killing it here. And we close the income summary to capital. And then your final closing entry is to close drawing to capital. So let's go through each of these individually. Your first one is to close revenues to income summary. So let's find that one revenue account we have here, fees earned. Now notice that fees earned currently has a balance of 10,000 credit. Well, how are we going to decrease that to a balance of zero? How do we close that out? Well, we do the opposite, we debit. And also you can kind of look down here we have a credit as our normal balance, so to get rid of it, we debit. That decreases it. So let's start by debiting that fees earned account for our first entry, $10,000. Now looking at this guidance we have down here, where do we close revenues to? Well, we close it to income summary. There we go. 
Now that we've completed that first one, closing revenues to income summary, let's move on to our second closing entry, uh, closing expenses to income summary. Now let's take a look at our expenses. We have one, two, three, four expenses here, and this one with a balance of zero, so we don't have to worry about that one. So here, our expenses have a debit balance. Well, how do we close that out to zero? We do the opposite. We have to credit them. So let's go ahead, put in our date, and then I'm going to skip a line and I'm going to start crediting all of those expenses. So we have wages expense, supplies expense, rent expense, and insurance expense. Remember, since this one has a balance of zero, we don't have to worry about it. It already has a balance of zero, so we do not have to close it. Okay. Now, once we have closed our expenses, what do we close it to? Well, income summary again. So let's go ahead and use income summary as our plug. And remember, our rule debits must always equal credits, so 700 plus 1,200 plus 3,000 plus 500. That gives us total expenses of 5,400. Now, now that we have our first two closing entries, our third one is to close income summary to capital. Now our income summary account, so far we have credited it for 10,000 and we have debited it for 5,400. So let's remember those rules. We're gonna use a T account to really analyze this to see what's going on. If I have a debit of 5,400 and a credit, of 10,000, well, what's the balance in that account? Well, that uh, debit of 5,400 offsets the credit of 10,000. We have more on this side. Think of it kind of like a scale. So we have a balance of 10,000 minus 5,400, 4,600 in that account. And just to kind of deviate just slightly, let me pull up our old financial statements. Here we go. If you take a look at our financial statements, that income statement we did earlier, we had our revenues, fees earned, all of our expenses, and our net income was 4,600. Well, where did that 4,600 flow to? What was the effect of that? That 4,600 came down to our statement of owner's equity, and ultimately, it increased Christopher Knoll's capital, so it increased capital. Okay, now that you've seen that, let's go ahead and head back. There we go. So that maybe this will help bring everything together. So on this third one, we need to close income summary to capital. So what is the balance in income summary right now? It's a credit of 4,600. How do we get that to a balance of zero? Well, we do the opposite, we debit it. So let's do our third closing entry, closing out income summary by debiting income summary by 4,600. Now income summary, since we just debited it right here, now income summary has a balance of zero, and that would be the final balance in that account. There we go. So as you can see, we created it in the first entry, and then we killed it in the third entry. So it's just a temporary intermediate account that we use just for the closing process. So now let's finish up this third entry because obviously we're missing something here. What do we always close our income summary account to? Uh, that would be capital. So let's take a look at our capital account right here, Charles Knowles Capital, and that will be our credit. Oops, sorry, Christopher Knowles Capital for 4,600. Now let's take a close look at what that did to capital. We just credited a capital account, so that increased capital second. I'm actually going to drag these down a little bit. There we go. Now they're lined up. That was a little confusing. So capital right here is increasing because we credited it. So what exactly does that mean? We just increased capital. Well, where else did we increase capital? Well, we increased capital over on our statement of owner's equity when we did our financial statements. So basically, 
what these closing entries are also doing, their secondary purpose. And their first purpose is to close out all of our temporary accounts. Their secondary purpose is to update capital to its new balance. So let's think about what's really going on here. If we had previously, let's find where we were, unadjusted, there we go. If we previously had a balance of 50,000 and we just increased it by 4,600, what's the new balance in that account? Well, that would be the 54,600, which we found over here in our capital account. Now, keep in mind, there's one other piece that um, doesn't really apply to us in this example, but I still want to go over it just in case. Um, our fourth closing entry, we usually need one more step. However, in our case, we don't have a balance of drawing, but I want to talk about what it would be if we did have a balance in our drawing account. Now, if we had a balance in our drawing account, we would have to close drawing to capital. So let's focus on the drawing. Typically, since drawing is a contra capital account, it has a debit balance. So to close it out, we would have to credit it. So let's go down one line. And let's pretend like we are crediting Christopher Knowles, comma, drawing. Forever much that balances. And where do we close it to? We close it to capital. So Christopher Knowles, comma, capital. Forever much we have there. Now keep in mind, what does drawing do in this case to capital? Well, drawing now has a balance of zero, if we did have a balance in it. And capital would be decreased by the balance in the drawing account. If you remember those formulas that we talked about, for the statements, there we go. Withdrawals always decrease capital. So this would update our capital even further. So it fulfills again that secondary requirement or that secondary result of closing entries. It updates capital to its new balance. So those are the main things we want to go over in regards to closing entries. It's only those four closing entries, nothing else. But the one other thing I want to talk about before we kind of end this series on the accounting cycle is to talk about how this would affect our post-closing trial balance. Um, keep in mind, um, this is usually the last step of the accounting cycle, so once you master this part, you're pretty much done. Um, let's talk about how that would affect our balances. Um, well, let's see what it did to each one. Did it do anything to cash? No, nope, didn't do anything to cash. Did it do anything to accounts receivable? No, supplies, prepaid insurance, wages payable? No, no, no. Did it do anything to capital? Absolutely, yes it did. Here, our capital is 50,000. We increased it by 4,600. We did not have any drawings, so it didn't decrease it at all. But here, we have a new balance in capital, and that's 54,600. Good. Now here, if we had a drawing account, or a drawing amount here, that would be now zero. It's already zero, so we don't have to do anything there. What about fees earned? Well, we decreased fees earned, so there's no balance in fees earned. We got rid of those expenses. We closed those out. So that leaves us with, there we go. So your post-closing trial balance, the thing to remember it is that it only has those permanent accounts. So temporary accounts essentially are gone. And usually what you'll see is they, um, they can take away these accounts and delete them off the post-closing trial balance, or they will just leave them there with balances of zero. But essentially, this is your last step of the accounting cycle. This is the ultimate goal of everything we've been doing. And so next period, once we start the next year, we are going to have these balances in every account, and we're going to be able to see what happened during the following, uh, in this case, it's only January, the following month. So perhaps we can go ahead and take another look at what happened in February, but as of right now, January 31st, these are the final balances in the account once everything's been closed out. So I hope that kind of clarified closing entries as well as the post-closing trial balance process. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comments below. In the meantime, keep studying.